and the things that they were saying to each other made me want to rip my eyeballs out. This man was so absolutely unhinged. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my worst books of 2022. Is it the middle of March right now? Yes. I don't really have an excuse. I just never got around to filming my worst books, so here it is. Not gonna give a disclaimer because it is what it is. These are the books that I thought personally were the worst in 2022. If you don't feel the same way and you enjoyed these books, I love that for you. They just weren't for me. So without further ado, let us get started. So we are going to start this video off with a bang with probably my most hated book of 2022. It was so bad. But it is Blessed by Tanya Hurley, and I gave this a one star. If I could have given it a zero stars, 100% would have. It basically follows these three girls who all have the urge to go down to this church one day. When they get to the church, they meet a boy named Sebastian who basically um, convinces them that he is a saint and that he is going to save them from the world and their sins and all that. Honestly, when I finished this book, I didn't really know what I just read. I was so confused. I hated literally every single one of the characters. None of them were likable and they were all just so one-dimensional and just like cardboard cutouts of typical tropes. Not to mention the amount of offensive lines in this. Like for example, there was one line that I distinctly remember that was about the psychiatric ward that was in this book being on the top floor of the hospital because it would save money because patients would jump from that floor. And then there was also a lot of victim shaming and slut shaming. I should have DNF'd it and I didn't and I regret it because now I have lines like that stuck in my head. The next book that I have is another novella. It's Enticing the Scrooge by Jessa something, I think, by Jessa Kane. And now that I think about it, this might be my most hated book. I know I said that it was The Blessed, but now I'm remembering all that was a part of this and it might just take the cake. It basically follows Edison Scrooge who in order to receive his great-grandfather's trust fund or whatever, uh, he has to marry before Christmas. While hosting a party to find his um, future bride, he answers the door to a beggar named Blessing who is frozen solid from the cold and so he decides to take her into his house and essentially kidnap her and make her his future bride. So I can say with confidence that the orphan adoption daddy kink is not for me. That was like the biggest turnoff ever that I've ever experienced in my life. This man, Edison Scrooge, is uh, 30 years old and he essentially kidnaps a just turned 18 year old and basically turns her into his sex slave. And that's the whole premise of this book. The amount of times that this man forced himself sexually onto this young, naive child was so uncomfortable. And his whole justification of why this was an acceptable behavior was because she was too enticing, too beautiful, too sexy, and just too hot in general um, to control himself. So this man was so absolutely unhinged and I don't know if that was the point. Like he became so obsessed with her that every time she would leave the manor, she would have to have a full security team and when she would return from whatever outing she was in, he would interrogate her about whether or not anybody looked at her and would give her consequences because other people wanted to fuck her and she thought that this was okay. And I also just hated how naive Blessing was. Like, you're gonna tell me that she did not even know what an erection was, but then she was able to perform all these sexual acts perfectly the first time that she was asked to do them. Not even asked, just told to do them. Also, 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 see, now that I'm thinking about it, like, this is the worst book. 100% this is the worst book. What was that, like, learning to ride scene where she was literally spinning? on his dick like she was the fucking exorcist. Like, I just... People like this book? I don't... I don't get it. I really don't get it. So yeah, this is probably the worst. Just not. 
not good. The next book that I have is The Third Twin by CJ Omololu. This one I actually read for a blind book challenge on my channel, so if you want to see that video, I can post it in the description box and y'all can check it out. But essentially my mom covered it with paper, so I didn't even know the title of the book going into it, but I ended up hating it so much. The vlog is entertaining at least, but it basically follows these two twins, Lexi and Ava, who create a third twin when they were younger to kind of be their scapegoat and get them out of trouble if they need it. And then as they grow older, they begin using Alicia and like dressing up as her in order to be a little bit more wild and carefree. So one day Lexi goes out with this boy and it goes very, very wrong and the next day he turns up dead and Lexi is convinced that Ava had something to do with it so then Ava goes out with a boy and he turns up dead so she starts thinking that Ava is a killer using Alicia as the scapegoat and it's like the story of that. So like I said I went into this completely blind. The beginning was interesting, I was into it and then as it kept going it just got progressively worse and nothing really made sense. The plot was very predictable. I knew who the killer was within like 20 or so pages, so like that wasn't hard to figure out. It was just the things that Lexi got herself into and then her being confused about how she got into the situations that she got into, when nine times out of ten she was the one who caused those situations, just got very infuriating very quickly and I just think that Lexi had no backbone whatsoever. So it made it very hard to give a shit about whether or not she was going to figure out how to get out of the situation she put herself in. So yeah, this one was not good, but I do recommend watching the vlog. So at least I got content out of this book, if nothing else. Next up I have Here There Are Monsters by Emelinde Barube. This follows two sisters. One is 16, her name is Sky, and the other is younger. I can't remember her age, but her name is Deidre. Skye has always been the protector of Deidre because she is a little bit weird. She um, likes to play with like dead animals. She's an odd duck, but um, they end up moving to a new town and Skye is having no trouble fitting in, but Deidre is definitely having a little bit of a hard time. And then one day Deidre goes missing and Skye is going to stop at nothing in order to get her little sister back from the monsters that are lurking around the swamp that they live in. This one I don't want to say is a bad book. It just took me so long to read. I started it in November 2021 and I did not finish it until April 2022. So that is a bit of time because I just could not get into this story. It was so slow. The characters were all one-dimensional. I just did not give a shit about why Deidre went missing or where she was or how they were going to get her back. I just felt like I was waiting for literally anything to happen the entire time and nothing happened for a total of um, 300 and 35 pages, which is super disappointing because me and the author are mutuals on Twitter and she is so stinking sweet. So it just like made me really sad that I rated this book so low because they seem like a wonderful person, but I just could not with this book. I wanted to love it because look at this artwork. I think it's so gorgeous. The next book that I have is Accomplished, a Georgie Darcy novel by Amanda Quain. This is a Pride and Prejudice retelling, which I was actually really excited for because I thought it sounded really cute and fun. It basically follows Georgie who gets caught up in like this drug scam thing at her private school and she's shunned and everybody hates her because she basically like told on the person who was running this drug scheme. So now she's in her junior year and she has to prove to her older brother Fitz that she is capable of not tarnishing the family name any farther. But then Wickham Foster, who was behind this drug scheme, ends up trying to weasel his way back into her life and she is, you know, a little bit intrigued by it. So the premise sounded like it would be alright, right? right? but it was so slow and so boring and I hated Georgie with a passion. She gave off such like poor little rich girl vibes and it was so hard to root for her because it was just like, girl, shut up. Like, we know you're rich and people don't like you, but like, get over it. Do something with your life rather than moping in your dorm room, you know? It just got annoying very quickly. I mean, she was called out in the end and she did go through a lot of character development, but at that point, I think I was just so annoyed by her character that it just could not redeem itself in my eyes. So yeah, I 
really did not like this book. The next book that I have is actually a novella and it is Her Name Was Amber by Matthew Shaw. I hated this book. It was about a woman named Amber who after the death of her famous husband, he was a musician, he died by suicide. All of his fans blame her because she accused him of being abusive. So one fan who is literally insane, decides that he is going to take matters into his own hand and get revenge for Paul Lee. It just got so repetitive so quickly for such a short book, like it was only 80 pages long, and I was bored throughout the entire thing. And I really shouldn't have been because this is an extreme horror novella, which means that the authors usually try to pack as much punch as possible in a very short amount of time. So the things that were happening to Amber were very gruesome and like, just very disturbing and I was sitting there like shrugging my shoulders like huh that's that's unfortunate like that sucks for her but like I never really cared about it which I feel like in an extreme horror novel if you don't care about the main character you really don't get any emotion out of it like you're you're supposed to feel disgusted you're supposed to feel like empathy towards the victim but I was just like damn girl that sucks because it felt like it was the same thing over and over again so not my favorite extreme horror novel that I've read which I've read a lot so yeah I'm not the biggest fan of Matthew Shaw though I think I've read four or five of his books and I think I've only liked one of them the highest rating I've given him is a four but take that as you will next up I have Halfway Girl by Tessa Bailey this was my first Tessa Bailey book and she is like a renowned author like people love her in the romance genre. I was so underwhelmed by this. This follows a freshman named Birdie who is rushing a sorority because she thinks that that is what her late sister would want her to do and so she attends a frat party one night and she locks eyes with a senior football player from across the room and feels an instant connection between them and it's like their love story. I hated both of these main characters so much. I found both Birdie and Jeremiah to be so cringy and over the top and the things that they were saying to each other made me want to rip my eyeballs out. I could not stand them. Their insta-love was so ridiculous. It literally, they, they lock eyes on each other from across the room and they're like, I love you. Like, this is my soulmate. I can feel it in the air, the charge, in the the electricity in this room is just off the charts and it was just kind of like um well you literally go on about how he like gives off sketchy vibes and he's so big and like terrifying to look at and he's like kind of ugly but like that makes him attractive I, I just don't understand and I don't know if it's because I didn't read the other books in the series because this is like a small novella it's like 2.6 in the series or whatever so I don't know if I just like didn't get it but uh, I hated it. I hated it so much. Alright everybody, so those were my worst books of 2022. Again, I know it's late. Sue me. I don't know what to tell you. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!